What bad news for Boeing and NASA, but this time it's not about the never-ending Starliner saga. It's about a rocket considered the foundation of the well-known moon program Artemis. That's the SLS. So, what happened here? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main content, we want to tell you. First, thank you so much for watching our videos these last three years. Right now, we got 86,000 subscribers, getting very close to 100,000. To hit this goal, though, we need your help. So please, if you're watching right now, hit that subscribe button, and that way you will never miss out on our exciting videos that often get updated up to two times daily. Thank you so much for watching, and let's go ahead and get into today's show. All right, so the Space Launch System, SLS, that's NASA's next-generation heavy-lift rocket designed to be the backbone of Artemis, which aims to bring humans back to the moon and eventually to Mars. The most powerful rocket ever built, SLS is intended to carry astronauts, cargo, and other essential components to deep space, including the Lunar Gateway Station and landers for the moon's surface. SLS plays a critical role in this mission, as it's designed to deliver the Orion spacecraft, which will carry astronauts to lunar orbit. The rocket's versatility allows it to support different mission profiles, from crewed lunar landings to deep space exploration missions. However, the SLS project has been plagued by significant delays and budget overruns. Originally scheduled for its maiden launch in the early 2010s, the project has faced technical challenges, design changes, and management issues, pushing its first flight to 2022. Even with this delay, the project continues to struggle with meeting its milestones, leading to further postponements for subsequent Artemis missions. The budget for the SLS has also spiraled out of control, with initial estimates of around $10 billion for development now exceeding $20 billion. These cost overruns have raised concerns about the sustainability of the program and its ability to meet NASA's long-term goals for human space exploration. However, before getting into the issue of these excessive costs, let's talk about the aspects that can be considered core factors leading to unacceptable consequences of this rocket that was once regarded as the key to the stars. A recent report from NASA's Office of the Inspector General, OIG, has uncovered alarming new problems with Boeing's handling of the SLS rocket, which is central to the Artemis program. One of the most significant issues identified is the employment of an underqualified and undertrained workforce. Boeing's been relying on technicians and workers who lack sufficient expertise in aerospace production, particularly in the assembly of critical components like the SLS rocket booster and the new Exploration Upper Stage. This shortage of skilled labor has directly contributed to quality concerns and operational inefficiencies within the program. A typical example is a troubleshooting finding involving critical hardware concerns related to the welding operations. During the site visit in April 2023, inspectors discovered that welds on a liquid oxygen tank intended for use in the Artemis III mission did not meet the required specifications. This flaw was serious enough that the tank had to be segregated and was likely marked for disposal. NASA officials told OIG that the welding issues arose due to Boeing's inexperienced technicians and inadequate work order planning and supervision. The aforementioned welding issues have already resulted in a significant seven-month delay, showing the serious impact this bug could have on the entire Artemis program. The report also highlights significant deficiencies in Boeing's quality management systems. NASA used the Defense Contract Management Agency, DCMA, to monitor Boeing's work on the SLS core in the upper stages of Michoud. According to DCMA officials, Boeing's process for addressing contractual non-compliance has been ineffective, and the company's generally been non-responsive in taking corrective actions when the same quality control issues reoccur, the OIG report states. The report found that there were 71 corrective action requests, or CARs, issued by DCMA from September 21 to 23 regarding Boeing's SLS work. A CAR identifies a specific contract nonconformity about the work. Of the 71, 24 were level 2 CARs. That's a more serious version used for issues that can't be corrected immediately or involve critical safety hardware. That number of CARs, the DCMA said, is unusually high for a spaceflight program at this stage in development. There were enough CARs of one kind, inspections of work called stamp warranty, that NASA recommended DCMA draft a level 3 car reserved for severe nonconformities. That car was never issued, as NASA elected to use what the report called alternative corrective action methods, which included additional reviews. The new report also predicts that the development cost for Block 1B will hit $5.7 billion before its official launch. 
That's $700 million higher than the cost estimate NASA officially announced last December. Originally slated for completion and deployment years ago, Block 1B version is now a staggering seven years behind schedule. The financial implications are equally severe. Initial estimates of the cost of Block 1B's configuration was at $962 million in 2017. However, due to numerous setbacks and ongoing issues, that cost has now ballooned to an estimate of $2.8 billion. This massive increase in budget reflects the complex challenges faced during the development and manufacturing process. A key factor contributing to these cost overruns is Boeing's use of a cost-plus contract structure. Under this arrangement, Boeing's reimbursed for all incurred expenses plus an additional fee regardless of the total cost of the project. While this structure provides a safety net for the contractor, it also creates potential disincentives for efficiency. With a guarantee of reimbursement for all costs, there's less financial pressure on Boeing to streamline operations or adhere strictly to budget constraints. As a result, the cost-plus contract may inadvertently encourage prolonged development timelines as there is less immediate financial motivation to complete the project swiftly or to cut costs. Moreover, the report also criticizes the management of the main part of the Block 1B SLS. The exploration upper stage EUS will replace the interim cryogenic propulsion stage used on the initial Block 1 SLS. The EUS accounts for more than half the development costs for Block 1B as mentioned above. While NASA projects spending on the EUS to go down as Boeing moves workers off the project, we project Block 1B annual costs will remain at 2023 levels through at least 2026 before tapering off in the out years, the report concluded, noting NASA's budget projections don't include the additional funding needed for EUS through 2027. That risks delays in the Artemis IV launch planned for late 2028. Meanwhile, Boeing, using a software tool called an Earned Value Management System, measures progress based on technical cost and other data that has been disapproved for use by the Department of Defense since 2020 because of several deficiencies. According to NASA contracting officials, Boeing cannot produce a realistic baseline delivery date for the EUS due to continuing deficiencies in its EVMS, the OIG report noted. Given Boeing's quality management and its related workforce challenges, we are concerned these factors could potentially impact the safety of SLS and the Orion spacecraft, including its crew and cargo, the report concluded. It made four recommendations, including an improved quality management program, cost overrun analysis, and coordination with DCMA on bringing EVMS into compliance that NASA accepted in its response. The agency, though, rejected a fourth recommendation, which called for financial penalties for Boeing's non-compliance with quality controls. NASA interprets this recommendation to be directing NASA to institute penalties outside the bounds of the contract, wrote Kathy Corner, NASA Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development, in the agency's response to the report. She argues that there are other mechanisms, like provisions for issuing award fees in the contract, that can be used to address the quality problems. Instituting financial penalties outside the bounds of the contract subverts the control process of the contract, she concluded. Our recommendation was written to allow the agency latitude to use the most appropriate mechanisms practicable to impose financial penalties on Boeing for not complying with required quality control standards. Supervisors responded in the report, deeming the recommendation unresolved pending further discussions with the agency. Honestly, it seems like NASA is determined to protect its favorite contractor, Boeing, no matter the cost. Historically, NASA's often been lenient in overseeing this struggling supplier. Back in 2019, NASA instructed Boeing to complete the core stage for Artemis III by 2024. But so far, they've only managed to finish the one for Artemis II. The core stage, a newly developed component of the SLS, started production in 2014 under cost-plus contracts worth billions. These contracts ensure that the contractors reimburse for all allowable costs plus a fee, typically around 10%, due to the inevitable technical challenges. However, this type of contract has a downside. It doesn't incentivize rapid program completion, especially when companies aim to maximize profits. The longer the contract drags on, the higher the costs and fees incurred. For this reason, it's understandable if contractors deliberately extend their production timelines. Since 2014, Boeing has encountered multiple issues during SLS production, leading to significant schedule delays. Contaminated fuel lines before delivery by the supplier required reinspection of all engine parts, causing several months of delays. The Vertical Assembly Center, VAC, a critical tool for assembling the core stage fuel tanks, was initially installed incorrectly, preventing it from lifting components into position. After discovering this error in September 2014, 
The VAC had to get completely rebuilt, and subsequent welding problems throughout 2016 further compounded delays. Another setback occurred in February 2017 when the tornado struck the Mischout assembly facility, damaging buildings and slowing down core stage production. Even the testing phase, which began in early 2020, faced long-term delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic and technical issues with both hardware and infrastructure. As a result, we had to wait until November 16 to witness the first flight of the SLS on the Artemis I mission, where it successfully performed. Despite these delays, NASA continues to work with Boeing. In 2019, NASA even announced ongoing contract negotiations with Boeing to purchase up to 10 additional SLS core stages, including for the mission that aims to land the first woman and the next man on the moon by 2024. The news did not disclose the cost. NASA and Boeing have been less than transparent about this, but it's certain that the production and operational expenses for a single SLS launch exceed $4 billion. In November 2018, NASA's Inspector General reported that Boeing's core stage contract accounted for 40% of the $11.9 billion or $4.76 billion spent on the SLS as of August 2018. Another 2021 report from the NASA Office of Inspector General projected that NASA would spend a total of $93 billion on Artemis from 2012 to 2025, with each SLS launch costing a little more than $4 billion. A significant portion of this budget also goes to contractors across every U.S. state and more than 20 similar partners throughout Europe. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.